this morning the White House disassociated itself from a leading Muslim American organization, the Council on American Islamic Relations, or CARE, after the president of CARE was discovered to have said this about the Hamas attacks on October 7th. I was happy to see people breaking the siege and walk free into their lands. And then, of course, you have the three presidents of leading American universities now facing multiple calls to resign after their disastrous testimony on Capitol Hill earlier this week. The leaders of MIT, the University of Pennsylvania, and Harvard struggling to answer what seems like a fairly simple question. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate MIT's code of conduct or rules regarding bullying and harassment, yes or no? If targeted at individuals not making public statements is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. Now, there are several reasons I've heard hypothesized as to why the university presidents seem to struggle to answer that question. One is that language calling for the death of Jews, especially in Israel, has become normalized on far too many American campuses. Another issue might have been the premise of Stefanik's definition of genocide. And you understand that the use of the term intifada in the context of the Israeli-Arab conflict is indeed a call for violent armed resistance against the state of Israel, including violence against civilians and the genocide of Jews. Are you aware of that? Stefanik was providing one definition of intifada. It's a prevalent one, one that a lot of Jew haters use. As it pertains to Israel and the Palestinians, there have been two intifadas, both of which were protests of Israel's occupation of the West Bank that quickly turned violent and bloody, including acts of terrorism against Israeli civilians in Israeli buses and restaurants. So when students chant, globalize the intifada, is every one of them knowingly saying they want to bring violence and slaughter to Jews around the world? I cannot imagine that to be the case, but does that let them off the hook for using that term? What about from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free? In the Wall Street Journal this week, a poll revealed that less than half of the students who use the slogan from the river to the sea could actually name both the river and the sea. It's the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea, by the way. It's not difficult to see why many Jews who hear these terms would think that globalizing the Intifada means violence against Jews worldwide, especially after October 7th. And while that might not be what everyone chanting these terms means, it's certainly what a lot of folks hear. And when you learn that the head of the Council on American Islamic Relations, the number one Muslim American group in America is celebrating October 7th, well, let's just say that doesn't help.